Hey everyone, Adios Amigo here, and I know it's been a long time coming, but I'm finally going to close out reviewing the JVC HARX line. I have the HARX 900 here, and um, I have to be honest, I'm kind of shocked about what I heard. Uh, as anyone who's been following me knows, I actually love the HARX 700 for the budget. It's probably one of my favorite headphones on a budget especially in a closed back which is kind of hard to find a high quality one in the price point um, but even just all around for home use it is a solid choice so i wasn't sure what to expect from the 900 i feel like i personally am a cynic in regards of whether or not i believe uh, lightning can strike twice and I'm sad to say that I was kind of right in my suspicions. So I'll start with the good things. In a lot of ways, this is built very sim similarly to the HARX 700, but better. I actually have my HARX 700s over here. And side by side, you can see that they're very, very similar builds. The suspension system is the same. Um, they both have this twin rod and then this suspension headband, which wraps around this. I don't even know what this is. Some kind of, it's probably like spring steel or something, but some wire to keep the mesh headband suspended. And the headband itself, as you can see on the 900, is actually much, I don't know if I would say higher quality, but it's denser. It's definitely more plush. The headband, is softer you'll also notice that it does have perforations but this is an open air mesh so i found that wearing these this felt more comfortable on my head but this breathe this material breathes better so it's a little give and take on that but it's definitely not just you know the H harx 700 is just better across the board i i think in terms of weight and sturdiness, you can hear the difference. Right? And then this is going to... Sounds a little bit more hollow. A little jangly. So... I'll definitely say that, although similar, I feel like the, the HARX 900 is built better. You'll also notice the ear pads are very similar. In this regard, neither one is memory foam. The foam on the RX 900 is a little bit more, actually quite a bit more stiff, um, but it does soften over time as you wear it. The 700 is softer out of the box, which for me felt better out of the box. Um, I could grow to, to be okay with these pads, but they're just a little too stiff for me. Neither one's fantastic, but they both get the job done for the budget. So... I won't say one is better. I do think that the material that they wrapped the foam in on the RX 900 is superior, though. The material itself is softer. It doesn't have this wrinkly kind of appearance. It's very kind of smooth. I like the texture. It's a nice material. So in that regard, it is. I, I'll give the edge to the to the RX 900 um, and the material they use to cover the foam. One kind of shared what I'm discovering to be a flaw is in the cable system. Both have an attached cable. They can't can't take them out to remove it. On this one, well, let's, I wonder why my camera's freaking out here. Please stop. Okay. Uh, on this one, my 700, this cable goes in and out. And as you'll hear, let me see if I can pick it up on the mic. It will make this sound while I'm wearing these and just turning my head even a little bit. I suspect I could fix that with a little bit of tape just to hold it in place. I haven't tried that yet. The 900 has not given me that problem yet. It is movable, but I'm guessing because I haven't worn it as much, the cable is still a little bit thicker up here. And so it doesn't move. Like it, it moves but it, it doesn't naturally move on its own just from me turning my head. So I will get a little bit of cable noise 
from the 700s, but not the 900s because the cable seems a little bit thicker and it doesn't seem to want to move as much on its own through the entryway into the headphone. So that's another win for the 900. They both have extremely long cables, so finding a way to route them is kind of a priority, especially if you run both of them to a fairly nearby amplifier on your desk. Both of these are being tested on from a Magni Heresy that is about two feet away. And there's about, I don't know, four feet, six feet of cable just laying on the ground right now for both of these. Not terrible if you plan on keeping the source further away from you, but I would definitely recommend some manner of cable management if you're going to be running them nearby. And that kind of covers the build aspects of both of them. It's a lot of retreading. They're both very similar in terms of adjustability. And so a lot of what I said about the 700 is going to apply to the 900. So on to the sound impressions. And in the way that I give my review for these headphones, it is almost going to be a review of the HARX line itself. And part of the reason for that is just in the way that these headphones all sound different, including the HARX 500, the smallest of the bunch. Now, there is almost a linear progression in tonal balance between these headphones. And it's kind of a Goldilocks effect. And what I mean by that is the HARX 500 starts off with an incredibly bright, tinny sound. It's very aggressive. And the stage is almost dead. You almost have to listen to it at a low volume. And in that regard, I guess it's true across all of these RX headphones. They sound good at low volume. The RX 500 only sound good at low volume. The rest of these can be listened to at normal listening volume and still be enjoyable, but they all sound good at low volume. But the 500 starts off bright and tinny. The 700 occupies what I think is the middle ground with the most neutral, natural tonal balance. And then the 900 goes into a kind of dark, warm tonal balance. And so a lot of what your taste is going to be will determine which of this line makes the most sense for you. Now, with that said, price can do that too. The 500, for some reason, is usually very close in price um, to the 700. And um, in terms of build quality and in my preference, tonal balance and sound quality, I think the 700 creams it. So I, it's hard to justify the 500. Right now, I believe the 700 is going for about $30. When I was on Amazon the other day, it was that's the price I found for these was $30. It was $60 for the 900s. It was twice the price. And despite the improvements in build quality, it does feel sturdier in hand. I think almost every sound metric the 700 sounds better to me. Okay, and so I'm not just gonna leave that very generic statement on its own. I'm gonna kind of try and detail how I came to that conclusion. I have a set of test tracks that I normally run through. It's about, let me see, 24 tracks long. And it's that many songs, especially for when headphones sound so similar, I need to kind of tease out the differences, the smaller differences that might be between headphones. I didn't have to do that many tracks for the differences between these two headphones. I was able to go through, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, about six songs before I kind of had my impressions set on the differences between them. Um, so I've used the 900s for maybe about two weeks. I've used them for uh, voice chatting. I've used them for uh, video gaming and Battlefield 2042, Minecraft. I've listened to the test tracks. I did actually do some listening to music just for my own purposes, just general enjoyment. 
And um, something always kind of felt off about them. Right off the bat, and this is months since I listened to the 700. So I wondered if perhaps the whole line sounded like this and I was just misremembering. The 900 had a fairly thick veil around vocals. They always sound a little bit more distant, a little more hazy than I remembered out of the line. The upper mids and the treble are noticeably rolled off. There's just a general darker tonal balance. I noticed that the drums sound incredibly natural on almost every recording in a good way. This drums sound fantastic and they're not boosted so much that it hurts your head when you volume match. The problem is more that everything else just feels so inadequate in comparison. Vocals generally sound compressed. The stage can sound congested depending on the instruments being used. I noticed that guitars that kind of had like an overdrive effect or were just generally overamped, you know, sometimes on purpose, just to get that really chunky sound, would make the whole stage sound congested on its own. Whereas if it was kind of a cleaner amping sound or it was a classical guitar, then it sounded a lot better. It was a vast improvement. And so here's some listening notes I have. Part of the test tracks I use just for general rock purposes and especially for overdriven guitars. I listen to 04 Limited Sazabi. Uh, that's the band. The name of the song is Squall from the Soil album. It's kind of got a higher energy Japanese punk rock sound. And I noticed that the stage sounded congested because the vocals were kind of being pushed a step back from where they normally are. And it ended up kind of being jumbled together with the overdriven guitar and the upper bass from some of the drum notes were starting to bleed into the bass guitar and the kind of upper bass bled into the mids as well. And so it was just kind of a muddy, fuzzy sound, which was not pleasant. I tried a different Japanese recording. This time it was Ori Ska Band's Carry On. The... The brass in the band, because it's ska music, is a little more toned down than it should be. It's still relatively clear, but you do lose a lot of details. It's just quieter than I'm used to listening to in my headphones. Uh, the female vocals did come a step forward compared to the male vocals, but it's still notably veiled and still not nearly as clear as I'm used to hearing. I noted that the drums and the rhythm guitar kind of take a step forward in the song and the veiled vocals and the brass because they sound so much quieter than the rest of the recording create this fake sense of scale of distance front to back but it feels wrong because I know that's not the way that the stage presents presents itself in other headphones that I usually go to as a metric for um staging and uh, depth and width. Um, one thing I will say is that when you go to natural instruments, not a ton of overamping, it does sound noticeably better on the 900 compared to its performance on other songs. On Dave Brubeck's Take 5 from the Time Out album, the saxophone sounds it's really solid. The drums sound solid. The piano is a touch quiet, but it's kind of okay because it's playing a rhythm while the rest is going on, so it, it works well. There is a loss of detail. I have a listening note from 52 seconds into the song comparing these two headphones. There's actually a saxophone kind of segment in there, and on the 900s, it sounds solid, and on the 700s, I can actually hear the valves on the saxophone opening and closing as the fingerings are changing, which I could not hear on the 900s. Um, so tonal balance aside, this is the 700s are picking up a lot more detail than the 900s. It was kind of a similar deal in Royal Crown Reviews Beyond the Sea. The, the instruments they use are very clean. The recording is clean, and so it sounds pretty solid on the 900. 
but I can actually hear the fingering on some of the guitars, on some of the instruments. I can hear some of the breathing patterns of the the players on the 700s. And you're just taking that loss of detail. And I feel like this also has the more natural arrangement for stage. On Real Big Fishes, You Can't Have All of Me. It's a song I've listened to a lot of times. And I... I know, just based on my experience with other headphones, that the actual recording, the lead vocals are a touch too forward as part of the arrangement. And so that's kind of what I expect when I go and listening to it. And the HARX 900s actually corrected the problem because it pushes the vocals back. The vocals on this particular track sound better than an accurate headphone would represent because it's much further back than it should be. And so I found myself enjoying it, but also feeling like the recording was off because it didn't have that little tinge of unpleasantness from how forward the record the vocals were. Uh, so in a way, there are times where the voicing of this can fix a bad recording. Um, which isn't, you know, if you're just looking for something to kind of push things away or make it softer, it definitely takes the edge off of a lot of recordings, a lot of music. This is good, and it does so without making the bass feel super bloated or overemphasized. So I would actually say if anyone's like sibilance sensitive or treble sensitive, this would actually be a solid choice. Kind of a good example of natural performances sounding better. There is a band called The Revivalists. Uh, one of their songs, is one of my favorites, is Wish I Knew You. And the guitars and the backing instruments all kind of have this... I hate to say the word natural, but it, it's just a really clean sound. It doesn't have that kind of gritty indie sound that you might expect out of a small rock band. And with the cleaner sounds, these headphones sound pleasant. Like, it's just a pleasant listen. It's very chill, uh, very enjoyable, and just darker. You know, everything is just warmer across the spectrum. And so, I mean, honestly, between all three, right, the 900 is the warm tonal balance headphone. The 700 is probably the closer neutral headphone and the 500 being the the treble cannons the 700 for half the price is still just hard to beat i between all three of them i think for anyone who's looking to get a new pair of headphones just to start listening to music on the higher end or just something better than you know some crappy pair that they might buy at walmart i highly recommend the 700 still for for half the price i think you're getting much more detail and a much more accurate representation of your music. And you're not taking a huge hit in build quality, although you are taking one, but I mean, that's for twice the price. That's the thing with this price category that makes things difficult, right? Is $30 and $60 both sound incredibly affordable, but you have to think from the perspective of if someone is looking for a bare minimum headphone to get by on a budget saving thirty dollars is kind of huge right i mean that might be the difference between having a pair of headphones or a pair of headphones and a microphone or a pair of headphones and a video game or something you know someone on a budget who has to squeeze out as much as possible $30 is a big difference. And then when you take into account the fact that I actually think the tuning on the 700 is better than the 900, it's hard to recommend the 900. And, and so, I mean, because the difference in price between the 5 and 700 is so minimal, I mean, in the end, I feel like the 700 series headphones invalidates except for very niche cases, the need for the rest of the HARX line. Like, this should become the base upon which the whole series 
is built moving forward, in my opinion. In my opinion. I mean, it is also nice to have a sample of flavors that people can pick from, right? Like the DT series. The 770s, the 880s, the 990s all give you a very different vibe. Or the Sennheiser HD 600 and 6, 650s get a very different vibe. And maybe that was their intention. I don't know. I don't know. But the I think the pricing differences make it very difficult to recommend the upper and lower tier. The middle tier is just that sweet spot where it's hard to suggest people move outside of it. So, um, yeah, I mean, the 900 is okay for $60. It's too dark for me, personally. And um, in a lot of the ways that I like it, it's very similar to its half-price brother, which I like in even more ways, especially sound quality. So that that really, you know, that ends things for me. Get the 700s for 30 bucks while well, you can, I guess, if headphone, if affordable headphones are on the, the radar for you. Thanks for stopping by. I, I, you know, I'm like, I'm sorry. It's not something I can rave about super positively. It's got its good things and its bad things, but considering the competition, I just, I can't recommend someone gets it unless you have that niche circumstance where you are very treble sibilant or sibilant or treble sensitive. Yeah, just get the 700s. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Adios Amigo, and I'll be back with more videos and content coming soon. Thanks for those that stuck around. See ya.